JD and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to do a step-by-step -step breakdown and cleaning and reassembly of this very nice old what is this watch? This is the um, Omega pocket watch um, and it says WL Whalen Sault Ste. Marie, Canada. So this is the one I was talking about in my last video that I believe was recased by a jeweler so he bought the Omega, he or she, bought the Omega movement, uh, probably from Switzerland, and then bought the case probably from the U.S., and then recased it and put his own face on it so he can get some advertising for his work. So I'm gonna, this thing has never been cleaned. Um, it's a really nice old pocket watch. It's got the, the old thick crystal. It's a size 18, maybe, yeah, about size 18, I think. So it's also a full plate, I think, we're going to have a look at this and uh, I'm going to disassemble this completely and then I'm going to uh, clean it in my new cleaning machine. I'm going to put the videos on there for that as well. So let's see how successful I am today at doing this. Um, another thing is that uh, I've got Luke's watch sitting there and I've got to figure out what to do with Luke's watch. So I think that I've been working on that Luke watch for a long time. I was going to give it back to him saying, I, I give up. I'll even pay to ship it back. And he said, no, no, keep working on it. Keep working on it. Like, Man, you're killing me. If I was being paid by the hour, it'd be up to four thousand dollars on that watch. So, but I'm not. So uh, I think I'll try one more thing. And the only thing I can think of is the impulse jewel. It looks like it's a little rounded on the base. And if I can flip that impulse jewel out and it solves the problem, then thank God for that. Okay. So that's that. Um, it's a Sunday morning right now. I put a little YouTube video on where I played. Uh, Yesterday by the Beatles, and I was plucking it on the guitar. Um, some beautiful chords in that song, by the way, just beautiful. I usually play that on acoustic. If anyone's interested in me doing a video on how to play that song on guitar, then go ahead. But I'm sure there's plenty of YouTube videos out there with that information. So, so let's get on with this good old pocket watch. So the first thing I'm going to do is have a sip of my coffee. There we go. Move that watch back here. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. All right, so I've already pulled the uh, crown out on this watch, and I want to align the hands to the top before I start anything on this. And I leave the crown out like this because I'm going to have to do that anywho, right? So if I flip this over and have a look inside, what do we got? We got, we got a watch. So we've got one of the uh, screws are missing, so that's not a good thing. So I'm gonna have to replace that screw. Um, the rest of it works, I've done it before, but it looks pretty gummed up, it's pretty dirty. That's my, my before, right? But what I wanna do before I start working on this watch is test it to see what the amplitude is. So let's just wind it up a little bit and see what I can get from an amplitude perspective. Then I'll let the power down and um, look at it from there, right? So probably not so great, but it does run, as you can see. So it's pretty poopy, right? As I'm looking at it, it looks like it's got about a, maybe 180 degree swing on it, which would give it a, whatever 180 degrees is divided by two, uh, that would be the, amplitude of it it's 90 degrees according to my six years of electrical engineering training so I just put my mic on top here and I'm gonna get my open my software up and have a look at the amplitude So if I believe these numbers, which I don't, uh, the amplitude of 258 degrees, which means it's like 500 degrees swing on it, which is not what I'm looking at right now, I don't think. And the rate is 139 seconds per day, which is pretty high. But if I take a slow-mo video of this baby and have a look at what it looks like in slow motion, um, I just use my phone here and slow-mo it really quickly. 
um, I'll be able to tell uh, what that amplitude is. Maybe it is pretty good. Who knows? So let's just do that and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, there's a slow motion video of that. And if you look at one of the arms swinging, it's just swinging 360 degrees. So the amplitude can't possibly be 258 degrees. So I'm not sure what is going on here, but that is not the amplitude. So this gives me a better idea of what I'm looking at from an amplitude perspective. And I look at where the, the actual arm stops, the second arm stops on this. And that gives me an idea where that beat error is. So I got an arm stopping here and it's going around and stopping, there's an arm stopping on the other side, the opposite side. It's not too far off um, on both sides, just a little tiny bit off so that it's swinging pretty much the same in both directions. So that gives me an idea what the beat error is. But anyway, that's the uh, real amplitude. So maybe I've got to just take my software and adjust it here for this. Now looking at this again, it says Omega Watch Company on the top here. I got my fingernails longer again because I snapped them off and filed them down and now I'm just, I need to recut them. I let them grow so I could trim them down so I could pluck my guitar properly. Only in one hand, baby, only in one hand. So anyway, the Omega Watch Company, Swiss, one or seven jewels adjusted um, to two positions. It looks like it's a nine, but it's not. If you look closer, it's actually to two positions. And it looks like it's been hauled way over to slow here because it's uh, you know it was running pretty fast at 139.95 uh, um, so I'm not sure whether I did that or not but it's been hauled way over to fast because it wasn't running properly so so I just have to let the power out on this now and start working on it I keep moving my coffee around here but anyway so to let the power out on this watch I need to hold this, wind it up just a little bit here, and then move. There's a little dot here that I can use to stick my toothpick in. This is not pegwood, it's a toothpick. And just pull this back a bit as I turn this, and that should allow me to release the power here and walk it back slowly. It looks pretty gummed up when I'm walking it back. It's not flying back really good, so it needs a cleaning, man. It needs a cleaning. I'll probably throw the uh, the watch uh, case into the ultrasonic cleaner and let it do its thing. So just have to walk this back here. I know there's a lot of leftover power on this thing, but I'm not sure how much. And I broke my toothpick off in that little hole. Nice job. All right, let's push it from back here. That won't work. There's always something, isn't there? Always something. This is a Sunday, so I don't want to be disappointed already on a Sunday, right? So let's try again. I think I'll use a different pokey device to move that thing back. I do have my needle in my grip here, so I just need to put that in the hole here and then see if this works. Yeah, that's a little bit better. You can see I'm letting it go and nothing's really happening. It's kind of gummy. So I bet you that mainspring has never been cleaned either. That's as far back as it wants to go. And the watch is just sort of coming to rest. Coming to rest. <laughs> it's like saying things twice. It's coming to rest. I'd be like Bun Special there. Bun Special is a pretty cool guy. Um, I like how he gets all angry at his pocket watches. Uh, I need to get more angry at my watches. Stop being such a nice guy. So there we go. And I'm not worried about this falling out, but I'll put this loose case loosely in the back here. And then when I take this off here, the hands are no longer lined up, which is not a bad problem. This thing is hard to set too. When I just grab it from the side here, like that, and then put your hand in like this, and then pull up and use the body of the watch to actually pull it up. Sometimes it wants to pull up, other times it's a pain in the butt. So it's being a pain in the butt right now. Ah, jeez, holy crap, that was not easy. So before I take the movement out, let me just remove the hands. You can see some 
there's been some coloring here to fill this in in the past uh, and there's a fingerprint right here so that's probably not good Every, other than that it looks okay um, I need to grab my hand removers I might use my wide ones for this one today because it looks pretty wide so if I get my wide hand removers and put them under there and get a a tab to protect the face grab a tab here or a piece of plastic maybe that'll be that'll be fine um, I might be able to pop these up with my big hand removers so they're a lot easier to use oh yeah those are perfect so those are these are made for this size watch just grab those hands and move them out of the way and then now the little baby hand has to come out this is a harder one because it's so small and you really got to watch the uh, this is a fourth wheel pivot coming up through here and you want equal force on both sides so you don't bend that pivot because that will cause all kinds of problems in the future you may have to get another fourth wheel if, if you did that so a little piece of plastic to protect the face while you're doing this and just grab the uh, the hand on its pip and put it aside and usually I put these things inside the watch here so but this time I'm gonna stack all this stuff into a, a holder so now I've got this um, out I'm gonna clean the face up anyway so I'm gonna use my fingers here to just back the watch movement up so now I got the case here I got the hands circling the case as you can see over there and I need now to take the face off and there's a couple of screws here for that so they look pretty small actually on this watch so it's a I think I'll get a little bit more of a close-up all right whenever I do a close-up it seems like the mat looks dirtier so I'm a victim of my own close-ups so I got a screw right here but I'm not sure if this I think I need a bigger screwdriver than this one here usually the black one works nicely for these um, but I had a problem before with the uh, screwdriver itself now you want to take these out but not all the way out because you want to make sure you don't lose them right this one doesn't have a screw in it so it should have a screw right there and so I'll look turn around this one does have a screw in it so I'll take this one out it's a little blurry right now I think just move it up a bit take away the blur take away the blur I need to have the COVID distancing with my camera there we go. I'm not sure if that'll come up or not. You got to find a little notch here to pull this up. There we go. And then the good thing about these fingernails is they work so well. There we go. So that's out. Oot! That's oot. And there is basically there's the uh, center wheel. So they're missing a whatever they're called on the top here to prevent the wheel from coming up. So I'm going to put one of those in there. The old thingamajabby doohickey. The thingajabby, the thing doohickey jobby thingy. And this is kind of stuck in here because it's this thing is holding it back. Um, I'm going to see if I can just pop this straight up with my tweezers. If I can, then life is good. If I can't, yeah, I can good. So the Canon pinion came out nicely with no issue at all and so now oh, I need to get my movement holder out wherever the heck that is oh, I gotta go get a movement holder I'll be back all right I got my Myers number 58 movement holder oh yeah this is a very very nice movement holder and <clears throat> I hate to tell you folks out there but I have three of them now three of them I had to pay 160 bucks US I think for one of them so Another one I paid like 35 bucks. It depends on whether the person knows what it is. But these little puppy dogs are worth every cent. So, actually, before I start stripping this down, what I want, what I should do, and what I'm going to do is tighten those screws if they're still there. There we go. Just tighten the screws up here so they don't lose them because they're small. There we go. Tighten that one up and then tighten this one up. 
try to keep your fingers away from the balance. I just noticed as I was going around there that my fingers were pretty close to the balance because you don't want to ruin anything here. So I want to take the balance out. It looks like it's in pretty good condition. And Omega is a pretty high-end watch company. So see in this thing here, you press this little button on the side and it snugs up. That's first stage. And then as I turn this here, it snugs it up even more, but it's spring loaded. So I can't over snug it, right? As you can see here, when I press that, it goes in and out. It's actually spring loaded, which is kind of cool. So not a lot of things in watchmaking are cool, right? <laughs> Wrong. It's all cool. So now I've got to remove this. And what I always do when I do that, is I get myself a toothpick. It sounded like uh, the fight just started. Just get myself a little piece of pegwood here and keep the balance down. I don't press hard on this, I just put a little bit of pressure on it. That way the, the balance cock doesn't fly around when you're unscrewing this. And it kind of stays in place, which helps um, with ensuring that uh, the balance, the pivots don't get jammed up or something. So I got my little tray here, uh, which is tray good. More jokes, you guys are getting so much humor today. So. And I'm just trying to lift this up here. There we go. And I should be able to just dump it. And I put a pad down here. So when I rest this down here, it's going to rest on the pad first. And then I'll be able to fall through the center. And then it just relaxes the spring, right? So there's no real tension on that spring. So move that out of the way. Got to move it out of the way because stripping down a watch, you could do anything and get yourself in big trouble so that's that part let me just turn this around the other way here um i usually remove this wheel but this is blocking it so i'm not sure how much of this of this i want to remove right it's always a toss up here so i'm going to start on this side here i uh was reading a book on watch repair um, and or clock repair and the guy said you know if the thing is working well don't strip it down right so if it's working well don't strip it down if it's not working well then go ahead and strip it down so which is kind of a weird weird advice I think but I'm not sure Got a little bit of shadowing happening here I'll just zoom in a little closer here and then then the shadows don't matter as much there we go. I think it's from the sunlight because I get my window open and it's shadowing. So I'm going to close the window here to get a little bit better. See now I, eh, it's still shadowing a bit. That didn't help at all. I'll turn on the main lights. That's what I'll do. Damn it. I need another light coming from this angle here. This side here. Hang on. Well, it doesn't seem to matter what I do, I get the shadow, so bear with me with the shadow, please. So as I disassemble this little puppy dog, I wonder if this is forward or backwards. It's always different, right? It seems to be different in every watch. I can't remember whether a Swiss watch is it's forward or backward. All I know is I don't like the blade on the end of this thing. So is this blade any better? It's a little bit better. Hey whiz. I think I'll work on that after. I know this one goes at counterclockwise, so let me just do this one. They used to have watches that uh, they'd show on the watch itself whether that was counterclockwise or not, right? But one thing I don't want to do is, is take the screw head off, because then I, I've introduced myself a, another whole set of problems in repairing this watch or getting it going and cleaning it. So I just want to get my tweezers under here just a bit to pull this up. There we go. I'll get that after. I can remove the whole thing without worrying about that too. So Not concerned. I'd like to remove it, but I don't want to take the head off of that watch, off of the, uh, the ratchet wheel. Crown wheel, ratchet wheel, nah, need to be corrected. 
I need to read my books more. Proper use of screwdrivers. So some guy wrote me and said when you're using a screwdriver, you hold it, you can hold your pinky down on the mat to help you, but that's fine with watches, but if, when it's way up in the air like this, this doesn't help me one friggin' bit. So, so much for advice. Advice. So that Luke's watch is the only watch to date that I haven't been able to get going. Of all the watches I've done, and I told Luke, hey man, I may have I may give up on this. <laughs> and Luke said, keep trying. I'm like you SOB, how dare you make me keep trying? Just lift this up like that and pull it out of the way. And I may clean that whole thing as a unit. There it is there, and that screw there is in super tight. So we'll see. I could throw that into the ultrasonic cleaner, but I'm gonna put it in the other bath. And then I'm going to take a picture of this because I know when I don't take a picture of it and I try to I clean it and try to put it back together again, sometimes I'm like, how the hell did this thing go back together? So I'll take one picture and then take a close-up of all this stuff. There we go. So I just took a picture of it just in case I lose my memory. Just in case I lose my memory. Look at all the springs and stuff in here. It's going to cause all kinds of problems. I know it. i got to undo this first. I think this is going to be a big project onto itself to get this back together again. Alright, that's good. That's good news there. It came out. Try to keep these parts together because the uh, screws are probably of different length. So when I package all this, I'm going to package it as one unit. And this baby here, I'm going to take a photo of this too, because it should be intuitive, really, but I'm going to photo it anyway. Just I'm going to photo it. That good English? Nope. Take a picture of that. Let's see. That way I've got... I got myself a picture of it, that way when I reassemble that, I can figure out how it goes back together again if somehow, like I said, I get instant Alzheimer's and forget everything. Just move everything out of the way a bit. And I like the way this thing is designed here. It's a very interesting design. This comes out nicely. I think my knee's starting to hurt from being bent. Yammer, yammer. So this screw goes with this little tiny part, right? So again, I gotta make sure the screws and the parts are put together properly. Because they're, they're all different sizes. Darn it. This spring here, that's a small one too. This one here, I don't think I'll touch. I'll clean that with the plate. I'm really nervous about these springs because they, you know, that you ruin that spring and you, and you've gone, you've ruined your watch. And that's a whole other problem, especially with these vintage pocket watches. If you take that spring out, there's a chance that you can, it'll break when you remove it, or something could happen that destroys that spring. If you do that, then you get bigger problems, and you know, you've just ruined a nice vintage watch. So sometimes I leave those springs in place and just throw the whole damn thing in the cleaner and then when I take it out again I oil the spring properly and make sure that screw is nice and tight. So there's nothing wrong with that, my friends. And there's little grooves on the side here that you can just stick your screwdriver in. Those Swiss people are smart. And then you twist the screwdriver and you lift that straight up. See that? And again, I'm going to take a picture of all the wheels and stuff. I probably don't need this, but just in case, right? Just in case. And usually steps up anyway, like in this one here, it goes from, so the wheel count on a pocket watch is, this is number one, so one, right? This is the mainspring barrel, this is two, the center wheel. Three is the intermediate wheel. And then four is the seconds hand wheel. 
right? And then five is the escapement, and that's the pallet fork here, and the mouth of the pallet fork, and that's pushing the impulse jewel that's on the balance that we took out. So that's how they kind of come apart. And I like to, instead of dragging the mainspring out, I like to take these wheels out first, right? I'll put those aside here, and that way it's freeing up the mainspring and barrel to to take out. I just remove all of that, and I can remove the impulse or the uh, escapement, and then take out the pallet fork. Now I probably won't put the pallet fork into the cleaning device because I I don't trust that the uh, the shellac won't be loosened up by that by the liquid in the cleaning device. So that makes me trays nervous. Trays nervous. That's a piss poor French. Très nervous. Très whatever nervous. Lactante. Da da da. Mais voyons, est-ce possible? Gaston Gavroche, un enfant terrible. Here, you just be very careful when you lift this up. Make sure you're, whatever you do is you try to lift it straight up. Um, sometimes it doesn't work, uh, but here we go. That's straight up, and that's in case the pallet fork, and the little, the pivots in the pallet fork, right, are very touchy, and you can ruin that. Just lift it up and then lift it out of the way. So, and just keep that grouped up together, and there's my barrel, mo barrel. And so that's about as much as I'm taking apart on this thing. Um, I'd like to leave, take this apart though. And if I can remove this plate on the top, then I got a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Let's see, there we go. I'm in camera, smile for effect. All right, now I've got these new little baby trays that I'm going to use. There's the word tray again. Eh? And that goes, I'm going to take a photo of this too, just to make sure the gear meshing is right. In case there's a up and down on the gears, I, I don't know. There might be. This will help me ascertain if there's a positional discrepancy I need to deal with when I do the gears. Get that over there, and then this is, I think maybe this is the crown gear or something. I can't remember the name of these things. I can probably just turn that upside down and dump it. There we go. Dumped. And if I look at that gear, this side here was the dump side, and this side is the non-dump side. So are they exactly the same? Perhaps. I couldn't tell you. And I'm keeping them together, keeping the screws together, so that's good enough. And the only thing I'm not taking out here is this spring. So that's stripped down. I just back up and have a look at this. And there you go. That's the full picture of the watch. So I've got, uh, you know, all of the gears here. I've got the mainspring barrel. i got to snap the cap off of that in a second. And all the plates and everything else. And all this will go into the washing machine. The wash, the wash machine, and the mainspring. If I just take my screwdriver and pick, put it in here, and then twist it, and take the lid off the barrel. That and again, take a photo of the barrel in case I'm stupid and put it in the wrong way. So there we go. So that's the uh, mainspring barrel, and that should just come out like this. And I don't want to have to buy a new mainspring, so I can't remember what, whether I bought a new one or not for this. I remember when I got it, it, I think the mainspring was weak. So your kung fu is weak. Now I read somewhere I've walked a lot of mainsprings into watches, and I read somewhere that if you walk it into the watch, you're gonna you're gonna create you could create a bit of a a, a pyramid on the top of that mainspring, right? So you're going to make it, uh, whatever the term is, but it's going to cause it to be pyramidy, And uh, it's probably not good depending on the barrel type. Because I had a barrel type with a floating cap. And that floating cap on the barrel type 
uh, was nasty. So there's the spring that's out. And there's the barrel and it looks pretty friggin muddy. So look at that. It's pretty crappy. Now we're going to see if we can put all this into the watch cleaning machine container. All right, so here we go. Complete basket as opposed to an incomplete basket. You always wonder why they do that. It's the same reason that when you um, when you call them up and say, uh, hey, or when you go to dinner and they say, would you like fresh pepper? Right? And you go, well, do you have any stale pepper? I think that's probably better for me than the fresh pepper. I usually get a little bit of a laugh, but anyway, fresh pepper doesn't make any sense to me. So here's the baskets for the cleaning machine. And just push these baskets up here. So the big basket on the bottom, I can probably just leave back down there. And I'm going to toss some stuff in here. I'm going to toss some stuff in here. So maybe I take the basket out. That way my tossing's better. There's a, it's actually got a nice aluminum frame on it. This is kind of cool. So I can put some of the big, big stuff in here, right, without having to worry about it too much. And these are the screws, and pretty much they're all the same, so I don't have to worry about those. And I think I'll just throw all the screws in here too, because these screws are pretty much all the same, so I don't have to worry about mixing, mix and matching the screws. And I will also toss into the barrel. Uh, I can toss this in here, and this in here like that and maybe the arbor. Do I need to toss the arbor in? Yeah, I'll put that up top. And the mainspring, will it fit? Yes it will. Look at that. So that's the perfect barrel configuration right there. So that's the perfect lower basket configuration. Now I'll lower that in <clears throat> nice and carefully and to the bottom. That's in the bottom and nicely secure. Alright, second basket. <clears throat> There's the second basket. So I'm going to put some big stuff in the second basket and try to separate it all because I've got, I got more baskets, baby. I also got these little baskets that I bought. So these are small baskets that might fit inside the big basket. So if I look at the small baskets, I bought these at Cousins UK. Um, CousinsUK.com. It's a really good watch watch store right it's got everything you need for for doing watch work so there we go there's a little basket now that should fit inside there right yes it does and this allows me to you know put my thumbnail in here again i should always leave my nails long i don't care what people say so there we go that's perfect size actually so in here i can throw a mix mash of components. So this one here, I can throw this, this, and this in here. And I can also throw this, because I know there's no screws involved, the center wheel or the minute wheel and then the hour wheel can go in there. And I'll just throw that, close that down in a little tiny basket like that and put that in here. So that's phase one. Now, I'm having fun here. I don't want anyone to call my wife up and tell her I'm having fun. Because she may be tempted to stop it. Although she's pretty cool, so she won't. So, I don't think anyway. She's uh, got a really nice squale watch that I've never been able to make run. So maybe today I'll take another shot at the squale. <laughs> Every so many months I get the squale watch and I screw it up. So, so now I'm going to throw some I gotta throw the gears in I can't throw the gears in a little basket. I gotta put them in the big basket. But I'll throw them in like this. And hopefully they don't smuck against each other. I don't know, maybe this one I can put in the small basket. So so um, this here can go in here. I'm gonna do my pallet fork separately. They do not want the pallet fork to cause me issues. Um, so this here, and I think this is a very unique screw here, so I'm not too concerned about this screw, so I can put that in there. And I don't want to mix that one up, because that is not a unique screw. So I will really concerned about the escapement maybe getting screwed up in here. So 
So, and I don't want to put the escapement in that basket either. But I've got another basket to worry about, so what am I doing? So that's that. That'll do for this. Throw that together. So I push, push that together and it fits perfectly. I think. Yeah, I'm going to line things up, I think, for this basket to close properly. It opened nicely. There we go. I think there's a mark there or something. There we go. So that's, I can put that in there. So, and then I will take this here and just throw this in this basket. And I've got these little tiny pieces here. So I'm going to use one more small basket. Right. I'm just going crazy with the baskets. You know, you know I'm just having fun. I don't probably don't need to use so many baskets. I think I bought six of them. Get my thumbnail in there to open this up. Come on, thumbnail. You know what to do. There we go. So that's the last basket here. And I can I want to throw this little part in here. This part and the screw here in that basket and I probably can throw the center arbor in there too for the main for the mainspring and then I will go to the next level for this surprisingly um, so I close this up like that and then I can actually put this in here first and then put that on the side there's my second basket configuration. There you go. Look at that. Thing of beauty. And I love those little baskets. They're so good. I got my mainspring down there, which is great. So, let me lower that. Lower the globe. Lower the globe. There we go. Now I got my third basket. I'm running out of stuff to put in the baskets. And I've got here, I can put, I don't need another basket, I don't think, so put this screw in the this wheel in here and all I have left is this which I don't want to put into a basket sorry but it's not going in and I also want to make sure when I clean I'm going to clean the balance but I also don't want to throw the balance into the washing machine and see what happens so and I'll ultra ultrasonically clean the uh, other parts of the movement so that's that that goes on top after so just throw that inside this is kind of cool I think it's just fun having a cleaning machine and you're able to you know do stuff with it now these little baskets um, yeah I guess that's fine so that goes like that and then this goes on top like this so that's all there and then when I put that in the cleaning machine it gets compressed so there we go there it is Complete. Now we got to go downstairs to the cleaning machine and start the process of cleaning. I need to bring my phone with me, uh, although it's not really that charged. Uh, it probably has enough charge to deal with the cleaning part. So, don't need to do a lot of videos on the cleaning. But there you go. So that's that. Um, I'm going to clean this by hand, and I'm going to throw these into the ultrasonic cleaner. So there you go now the ultrasonic cleaner looks like let me show you the ultrasonic cleaner all right this is my second ultrasonic cleaner and this is not an overkill so this is a uh, perfect i could just put these in here like that um, i don't want to put the face in because i'll work on that separately and i want to make sure that the pallet fork is always where i know it is so put that in there I can put the crystal in there although I did a lot of work on that crystal already so I might leave that out let me see what kind of dirt is on here yeah because I don't know if I want to loosen the crystal by throwing it in the ultrasonic cleaner because I already shine that up like and I showed the technique but these this is the main piece that's got to go in so I'll throw these two in I'll leave this one out of there and I'll go ultrasonically clean this Ta da all right, here I am in the Basamante. A little bit messy here, but I got a uh, 
an old watchmaker's lathe right here. That's uh, pretty nice um, that I use occasionally. And I got another watchmaker's lathe right here that is pretty nice as well that I use occasionally. And my polishing, special glasses, but here we are. Um, and here's the cleaning machine. Let me see, looks like I've done some cleaning here as well. There's the machine and the instructions and yada, yada, yada. But I made a video on how to use that. I got one hand free only. So I got to attach this to the bottom. So first thing I'm going to do is let this, let us let some pressure off of this, right? To get this up and then this pushes down. And then, so this attaches to the bottom here. So I'm going to go hands free for a second because I need two hands to do this properly. All right, so this is attached now and spinning freely, nice and freely. So these are the jars. So the first jar is the cleaning solution. Then I've got two rinse solutions that I've got to deal with. And so if I can recall, what I do here is I've, there's my drill, is I need to put power on this thing. So I think I had power on it already. I can't remember. Yeah, there we go. So I got power. I got one of these breakers here just in case i've got an issue over here with the cleaning machine and uh so i just take the i just need to take the lids off the jars i'll just line the lids up so the same lids go in each time it's a bit compact down here though it has to do with having all of your families and your kids uh, luggage boxes from years and years down here okay watch check Watch, check, look at that watch. It's a thing of beauty. Thing of beauty. Saint Martin, Saint Martin, G008, I believe. So, so that's the heater here. And so the first thing I got to do is I'm going to wait till I get to the back one before I turn the heater on. Um, I've got it in forward here. Um, this is the control for the, for the speed of it. Um, this is the motor. Um, so I'll turn the heater on after, but the first thing I'm going to do is move this over into this position and then lower it. So in order to do that, it'll swing over like this now, I believe, or does it have to go all the way the other way? Maybe I can't remember. I think it might go all the way the other way. Yeah, it does. So it goes all the way to this position here. And then when I lower this, when I lower it, I've got to then tighten it. So I need two hands to do this, folks, because you can't do it with one. So I got to lower this, and then I'm going to pull that up, and then lower that into the jar. So I'm going to show you what it looks like after. But I just push the whole thing down, and then make sure that the this part here is touching the jar. There we go. All right. So that's what it looks like lowered. So I lowered that, and now I just have to push on the top here to make sure the basket is in the cleaning fluid, like this submersed and there we go so that's submersed in the cleaning fluid and it's down there nicely so it's tucked in i don't well, shouldn't get too many waves and it should spin freely so there we go that's that phase and i just have to make sure this is tight as heck because i'm not sure how how snug that holds things so and then i turn that all the way off like this and i'll put that that's a timer for five minutes but i'll just stop it when i when I want to stop it, right? So, so I turn the timer on like that. And then I turn the motor on like this. And then I turn this on, which will spin the motor. So just turn that on a bit. It should spin the motor. So there we go. So that's spinning the motor right now. And that should do for cleaning. You shouldn't have to spin the crap out of it. So I could make it go a little faster like that, but then you're getting bubbles. So you want to get it, probably this speed is good right here. And it's working perfectly, All right? So let's just leave that in for about five minutes. So this timer will shut off when this is over. And then I've got to pull this up above the liquid and spin it dry or just spin off the, the extra liquid. So this had a, probably a little bit too much liquid in here when I uh, filled it up. So I didn't need to fill it up so high, I don't think. So the other ones are fine. It's still ticking away, but I turned the motor off using the motor switch. And I just have to 
rises raise this up above the liquid and hopefully you'll, I'll have enough room to spin it off without causing any uh, friction here right so so I want to make sure that my rheostat is low um, I have to still have some timing on the spin-off too eh? so this is my old armored car armor armored core uniform in the back all this crap down here man so I'll turn this on this is off turn this on and then I'll see if I can spin that just turn it ever so slowly to spin it off and it should shoot liquid off there we go so that's spinning that off I don't want it to go too fast. I don't think that's touching the jar, but that's getting the majority of the uh, leftover liquid out of there. So there you go. There, now that that's done, I would loosen this up and then pull the whole thing up to get the uh, machine to the second jar back here. So I'm gonna, I need two hands for this. So again, I just line this, pull it up to the top, and then you can then you can move it to the back jar here. So I just have to move it and then dump it into the cleaning solution here. All right, as you can see, it's rinsing in the back here, and that's part of the rinsing solution. I set the timer here, but I use my watch. I don't bother with the timer. I just use my watch to do this. So maybe after I get used to it, I'll use a timer more. But I set it to five, but for rinsing, and then I got to rinse it in this one here after. I'm also going to turn the heater on now because you need to have a little few minutes for this heater to warm up. And there's a plate in the bottom there. And once this warms up, then you're ready to rock and roll. So you turn the heater on when it, you're rinsing in the back. So I only need to rinse here for five minutes and then another five minutes into this rinse and then into the heater. So I've also decided to put the lids back on the jars when I'm not using them. So I just lift, the, lift this up, spin it off. Then after I've done that, take the lid off of that, turn it around, put the lid back on that. So that's just to get less chemicals in the air that you're perhaps breathing in, which you don't want to. Probably advice if you've got poor ventilation to use a mask back here to do that. All right, I'm finished with this one back here. So now I've got to lift this up again. So maybe I'll show you what I'm, I have to do here. This is The spring in this is tight as hell, so which is, I guess, good because it'll last a long time. <laughs> so, so I've spun that off. And now I've got to take the jar, the lid off of this one here, and I'll put the lid on the other one after, I guess, or just move over like this. I don't want to get any chemicals on me. Put the lid on this one here, and you can hear the... That's the heater sizzling away. So so I've got to dip this, put this down again on, onto the top. And as I said before, you push this down and then you tighten this here, but you need two hands to do that, so... So I move that down into position, and now I've got to dunk this into the liquid and low enough so that it's uh, submerged and doesn't bubble up. So that seems like it's pretty free there. And I'll turn the uh, motor on here like that, and then turn this until it clicks. But I need to, this won't work unless this the timer is on. So we'll give it a good rinse this time. Let's turn this until it catches. It's pretty good there. It probably doesn't need to go any faster than that because the liquid is getting through there. I can hear that heater just sizzling away waiting for this, waiting for the parts, man. Waiting for the parts. So I think that's fast enough. I think if I get it any faster, then it's going to create a little bit too much, you know, it's, Good right there, I think. You don't want too many bubbles in here, otherwise it won't, the cavitation will cause it not to work. So so there it is there. So I've got the lids on both these things now, so I'm feeling a little more comfortable. So we'll let that run for the five minutes or so. All right, that's five minutes in the double rinser. So probably turn it off now, even though the timer is still running. Uh, the timer says it's got five more clicks to go whatever that means but i've read up on this and i think five minutes is long enough in that rinser so now i've got to pull it up and spin it off so first thing i do is turn this off like that 
And then all you do is you pull up on the top thing here, and that just pulls the basket right out, which is nice. And pull it up nice and high so it's out of the way. And then turn this again. I apologize about the mess in the back, but it is a basement, so. And I should be able to spin this. There we go. And I can spin this a little time on here again just so I can spin it. Spinning like crazy. We just have to lower the rheostat a bit here and play with it. The rheostat on this I think was made for the 230, 230 volts and not 110 as it says or 120. Um, I was trying to find a different rheostat I could put in there that gives me more play but I gave up. I gave up trying. So I'm just going to keep doing this. Let's keep spinning this here. Spinning out of control. So that's spinning full speed. So that's got to throw the liquid off of this thing for, uh, for sure. And then the last thing I got to do is put it into the heater. All right, that's good. Now I just have to lift this up. I can see the heater is getting hot. I guess that's what heaters do, right? So, so that's pretty good. That spun that off. So hopefully the majority of that stuff is gone. So I need two hands again because I got to lower this in the heater. I don't want it to touch the bottom plate, but I do want it to be low enough to work. There, it's in the heater. Now I just need to lower this a bit. And I'll lower it down and pull it up just a bit so it's not so it moves freely. And then turn on the power. A little bit of power here and then a little bit of power here. Okay, that's not running freely, so I need to pull that up just a bit here. Oh, I gotta turn the motor on. That's probably a good idea. Turn the motor on. Pull it down and pull it up just a bit and then turn this. Now I'm getting some action in the heater. I don't need to spin the crap out of this in the heater, so hopefully it'll just spin at that level. And put the lid on the third jar to prevent contamination and other things happening here. There we go. Lids in the front third jar. There's the tag for this, by the way, in case you're interested. There it is there. Pearl. Uh, it says 220, 230 volts, right? But they had a tag over it saying 110. And I was like, yeah, that's crap. Just like here, this they've got a 110 volt Supreme tag. I don't believe it. Anyway, it's, it's down there spinning away inside the heater. All right, this is almost done. And I let it run, and it's uh, almost at the, at the uh, turn off. And you'll see that this actually turns this off. Um, it stops spinning after it hits the top. There we go. And But it doesn't turn the heater off. So I need to turn the heater off here. Um, and I'll turn the motor off as well. So now it's relatively safe, and just so I don't get electrocuted. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to flick this off as well. So now everything is off. I've got no problems here touching anything and I will not get electrocuted. So, so I can pull this up from the, from the bottom, from the depths of the uh, whatever, and then just loosen this up. And this should spring right back up like that. There's the basket now. This is probably, you know, what is it recommended not to touch it? Actually, that's not too bad. It's a little hot, but it's touchable without getting burnt, which is nice. So and there's the heater and the inside, the heater plate. For it, so I'll wait a second, or I'll just use my, my rag here, and I'll take this off and then put it down. And I need two hands to do that. So you got to 
turn it so that this tab goes, it goes down and over. And that pre prevents this whole thing from flying off. So if I can push it down a little bit because I want to grab the top part here while I do that. Is that hot? No, it cools off pretty good. Yeah, I probably don't need a rag. That's not too bad. That's a nice winter toasty warm. So anyway, I'm going to do that now. There, I just twisted that off. Sorry for the camera work. I just had twisted that off and then bring it over to the side like that. And now I've got my basket with all my parts that should be clean. So let's go upstairs and have a look at that. So now for the ultrasonic cleaner, we're going to use ISNIC, ISO probably, ISO Nick. Jewelry and eyewear ultrasonic cleaner. And I'll just put a cap full of this inside here. And then I'll turn this on and we'll just also ultrasonically clean the case. <laughs> finished so I'm going to unplug this and I'm going to take these out and then dry them off with a, with a hair blower after I rinse them underwater. So there we go the parts are nice and clean now so this is um, just putting my hands down here so I just need to remove the baskets and, um, and have a look at the parts. So there we go. They should be clean and dry with any luck. I'm counting on luck, okay? So there's one basket, basket on the top basket. This is the second basket. It's probably a better technique for removing baskets, by the way, but there you go, second basket. And there's the third basket, which has got the mainspring in there, which should be nice and dry now. And nice and clean. It looks pretty spanky clean, too. So that's the three baskets with that side. Um, and I need to take these parts out, so let's just do that. My mat's getting a little bit dirtier here, so. so there's the mainspring here. And so it looks like I have a piece of mainspring here. So I think, I think actually this is tucked into the end of the mainspring. This is the part that's tucked in, it just loosened up. Um, and this looks like it's gum free now, which is nice. So I'll just move that barrel over there. And these are the plates, which are all nice and clean now. This, everything looks so nice and dry, too. Uh, there's the mainspring barrel cap. That's good condition. And I'll just take some screws out here. They, um, they're all over the place. So screw, screw, screw. Another screw here. Another screw here. I think my alarm went off because of the oxygen thing because of my... I'm not sure why it would go off actually. But it was uh, maybe it's the ultrasonic cleaner causing something to happen over there. So that looks pretty good. That plate looks nice and clean. It's uh, pretty darn good. And I got rid of all the, the oil and grime and crap on it. So that's really nice. That's the basket one. Let me go check out that beeping. All right, not sure why I've got the beeping happening, but so these are the wheels here. Just take these out one at a time. And I'm gonna examine those under the microscope and uh, to see how clean they are. But based on the washing procedure, I suspect they're pretty friggin' clean. So getting my little alarm upstairs going off, and maybe it's my ultrasonic cleaner causing it, but I didn't think it would cause that, but it might. There we go. Look at this stuff is great. These little mini baskets all have to come out now. This is great because it contains all of the stuff that you don't want to mix up. Right? There we go. That's nice and clean too. And so is that. That's basket number two. Look inside the basket. Make sure there's nothing there that's missing. No extra stuff there. That would be highly disappointing. Um, if not troubling, so I've got, yeah, I've got, uh, this here, like that, and a screw. Make sure I couple the screws up with everything, and that looks pretty clean there, too. 
And that's this basket completely done. So I will just put that back in there and put this back in. So I'm just stacking them all up now again. I probably should put these baskets inside of this too so I know where they are. Let me just get my thumbnail in here and remove all the lids here. They're fairly tight lids, which is, I guess, good. But you don't want things flying out, so it's a All right, there we go. So that's that. You just dump this. And this little part here was with this little screw here. And then these are the screw. This is the uh, the bridge for the balance for the uh, pallet fork. These screws are nice and crispy clean now. And it's one. One. Still getting the beeping. I'm running the uh, I'm running the ultrasonic cleaner for 20 minutes. So, so there, there you go. Uh, just have to grip it and rip it. Dump that. There's the arbor. Put this over by the barrel, and there's the other part here for the uh, for the uh, winding and setting mechanisms. I think my wife's going to come upstairs and go, what's this beeping all about, anyway? There we go. And let me just dump this here. And what do we got here? So we got, here we go, the hour wheel. And the intermediate minute wheel. And then we've got some gearing stuff. I'll put this over here where the other stuff was. And there's the screw for this and this. But... The cannon pinion I'm going to put over where cannon pinion stuff should go. Over here. There we go. So that's it. That's this all separated out. It looks good. Um, i got to put this piece, this leaf in with this notch here because this just came out. And, and that's to hug the side of the barrel. So it shouldn't be a problem for when I reassemble this. So, and just put that back. And I think I will take these containers and I will put these three containers in with in with this one here that way I know where they are All right maybe I'll put four in there because I, I bought a bunch of these so I don't want to lose them I bought six of them so, so if I put four in there because I had plenty of space uh, then I'll then I've got them all contained as they say so this this just prevents the parts from rattling around inside the inside of this device so there we go that's nice and then this goes in here there we go done done like dinner and we get i got a couple more in here but i'll store those up top now i want to put this back where it was before i've got two of these so when i bought the pearl watch cleaner i bought the high-end one and it gave me two of these baskets so i have an extra basket if I really want to go into watch cleaning production incorporated, I can clean a crap load of watches. And what I'll do is take these other ones and I'll put these with the other basket. What a br brilliant idea. All right, so this has uh, been cleaned in a, an ultrasonic cleaner. And I blue dry it. It's still hot, actually, to, to, to the touch from blow drying. Eh? So, so this should be ready to rock and roll. Rock and I love rock and roll. So I'm going to rock and roll this thing here. This is also a bit hot too, so that's ready to go. So the only thing I'm going to do now is the balance. <clears throat> All right, the last part of this equation is, is the um, balance here. So I want to get access to the top, the top of that jewel. So... The top balance jewel. I don't want to slip here though, so be very careful here with the way I unscrew this. I don't want to be unscrupulous. I don't think my blade will fit in here actually. Need another screwdriver blade. Thinner one. This is tricky, but it's necessary. There 
go a couple turns and should pop out. There it goes. And I think I gotta look at how this is attached here. Because this may rotate. This is the um so there it is there, and I think I gotta rotate this out of the way. Yeah, it's old school. Old school, man. So I gotta take some tweezers or something and then rotate that out of the way to to get access to this. I'm not sure if tweezers will be strong enough, but let's see if I can do this without screwing up the hairspring. No, that ain't gonna work. I need to pull it out and turn it around. That's what I need to do. I need to turn this thing around without effing it up. That's the tricky part. Put that on the mat. I'm going to have a, a look at this to see how this thing is. Yeah, it just looks like it's crimped inside there, which means... Let's see, there's a little screwdriver thing on the very top of this. So right, I'm going to poke my arm here. <clears throat> right on the very top of this, there is a, you should be able to put a screwdriver in there and rotate it. There we go, look at that. <clears throat> so I just put that in there and then rotated it. I'm sure it's going to be fun to put back together again when I do that. So now I just need to dunk this into some lighter fluid. And I had my dunker tank out. I was going to use my dunker tank that I've shown you before where you just do this and it goes up like that and it dunks your stuff because it's all threaded. That was my little invention here. And I was going to use that and I said now nah, I better strip this thing down. So, so I know this fits nicely so this should be out should just be able to put this in here and then add add lighter fluid so i'm going to fill that up with lighter fluid and let this thing drown for a while i think i might even turn it around the other way that way the uh the hairspring will get some nah i'll leave it like this i don't want to compromise anything here so but i know that the um this will not be impacted by lighter fluid so the impulse jewel will be just fine so I need to leave that in there for a while and I'm also going to puff it and agitate it just a bit a tad and that'll get all of the you know crap that's around the hairspring out of that hairspring so it's not stuck together anymore so leave that for a little while and set it aside and I'll just put this over the top I'm going to breathe that in, otherwise it's hard in the old lungaroos. Now I've got this thingamajobby doohickey thingamajob. But I've got to do some work on this. So I need to remove that upper plate to get access to that jewel so I can make sure that I don't have any issues issues with that jewel. So I'm not sure. i got to make sure I don't squeeze that. So that's prime octopus prime so I do that put that in there and I should be able to loosen those jewel settings or the jewel these screws that hold that setting on the top I just want to get access to the top of that because it hasn't been opened in a billion years and when I take the screws off for this uh, I want to line them up because you if you take the screws off you put them on the mat that's the one on the right and the other ones are the one on the left because they could in fact be different screws over time because the watchmaker might replace a screw and then end up with a different one. This whole thing might disassemble itself as well by the way. I'm going to take this apart so this is the one on the left. Put that down on the left and then with a little bit of luck I can actually get this thing to pop up. Um, I don't know if I can do that though because I may just push it out you can push it out from this side here with a stake and have a look at that so let me get my stakes out mmm steak and 
I think uh, convex. I so see one of these stakes that look like this, so you don't push on the jewel itself. And I can just push that in a bit, and maybe that'll come out. It's coming out. There it is. So I've got the top part out, and I may not need to take the bottom part out. So I've got to clean that up because it's got years of smush on it. So clean that up. And this part here, you can just basically, I'm not sure if I need to take that out. I can push it down on that again, keep it in place, and then clean the whole thing in lighter fluid. That is the plan. But I've got to push that back into position. So that's the bottom part, so this would be pushed this way. And I just need to push that back down again. Because if I take that out, and it and I can't fit it back in again. I'm screwed. So I'm gonna also have a look at this under the uh, the microscope. But actually, the hole looks pretty good from here. So I want to just toss that actually into the lighter fluid. Maybe the same lighter fluid I'm using for the dunker tank. What do you think? That might work. You look at this my configuration over here and see how much room I have. If I got enough room, I can just use a brush and the lighter fluid. I don't know. I don't know. I can just put that in beside it, maybe. There we go. Just put that in beside it. But I do want to brush it. So, can I brush that? Maybe. So, I'm going to peg that out anyway. I'm using my. I'm optimizing my lighter fluid use. Take a look at that jewel. Oh, that's pretty good. It's a lot better, folks, ladies and germs. A lot better. I'll have to check the magnetism as well on that hairspring. That's pretty darn good there. So I'm going to just Put that on some watch paper and let it dry for a few minutes. And then I am going to to I'm letting, I'm letting my hairspring there spend a lot of time in the dunker tank because I want this thing to be in mint condition. It makes a big difference if the hairspring is stuck together. It's it's almost impossible to get a good amplitude on that watch because it'll just be stuck together forever so so that's it that's this is here so now I can dry that off with a puffer but before I do that I want to have a look at this particular cap jewel here like what I'll do with the cap jewel is um, take a bit of uh, take a little piece of pegwood and I can clean off the uh, that cap jewel get the old oil off of it using pegwood. It works so well. You just have to make sure you don't um, slip and then the jewel goes for a run. It doesn't take much work at all and that's just cleaned right up. It just gets the old gunk off the pegwood, the jewel. And after I've done this, I might throw that inside the same lighter fluid again just to get that nice and clean uh, it's pretty darn clean like that I don't know what do you think folks toss her in if I toss it in I'll never find it again right I toss it in right here down to the bottom there we go you can actually see it in the video I'm looking up at my screen right now and I can see that thing floating down there so let's toss that in for a few seconds and Pull it out. If I can grab this with my tweezers and the lighter fluid, I get some kind of prize, right? I should get a prize. I've got a fire alarm on the house that's beeping. I tried oxygen airing it and it didn't work. This is not working really well, but no, I got it. I got it. Toss her down. 
put this aside again. See, I'm multitasking with the lighter fluid here, so. And move that around here. And just rub this on the watch paper. That's going to clean that up so nicely. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm take the tip of it here and use that. That looks pretty clean. This is where the oil is going to go when I put this back. I want this to be spanky clean. Let's hear that beep. Beep. Every few seconds it beeps. All right, that's pretty good there. Now, ooh, 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 I need to check out the jewel hole. Friggin' looks pretty clean. We get a chunk of Rotico here and just poke it in. I don't think I can peg that out, it's way too small. So I'm just gonna do the Rotico and put it in that way. All right, this is gonna be the world's longest video. I really apologize for this, but I wanted you guys to get a full appreciation of the work involved in actually cleaning a pocket watch well. That's pretty darn good right there. He there he did pretty darn good there, boy. Boy, Jesus, it's pretty good there. Uh, dare, I don't know, dare. Pretty darn good there. Let me see if I can throw some oil on there. That there, ding there. I knew a guy who talked like that years ago. There, ding, there, with the ding, there. His name was the Amazing Randy. He was a, who should have been a magician. Because the things he did were magic. I'm telling you, magic. Now let me look at this and see which side I need to put this on. I should have marked it. There's usually a little tiny groove on the edge. Right, there's the point right there. Um, but I didn't mark it, so I'm just going to guess. Let's say it goes this way. I think it does actually. It's like that. And then get that bench block out here. Where did I put the bench block? Where did, oh where oh where there it is. So I gotta make sure that, that this goes in where the bench block is. And then when I push down here getting really close and dirty here let me get a bigger one of these because That's flat now. I think that's good. Just move it around the circle now. Yeah, that's good. That's in there nicely. It's nice and clean. And now all I have to do is put those screws back. They're so small. This is the one on the right hand side, if I recall. And I use a very small screwdriver for this, again, as I recall. I think it was a black one. Let me get my watchmaker's bench. This is a this position under camera is kind of awkward. I'm slipping a bit with the screwdriver here. Lucky this isn't a gajillion dollar movement because I wouldn't be slipping. And it's mine. It's all mine. Mwah. Hey, cut it out. That thing just keeps beeping. Now I can unplug it, and if I unplug it, I still have a fire alarm downstairs, so I'm not too concerned that way. It's actually in the hallway, 
and likely that's kind of where a fire would start anyway. It wouldn't start upstairs. There's nothing really to catch on fire. So there we go. That's done. Um, I'm just going to push this back a bit like that. So that's ready for the uh, for the infamous hairspring and everything else. So I'm going to move this out of the way now. And there's the watch paper. Don't need that anymore. Well, I'll need it probably for the hairspring. So I just turn this off and on again. These videos are long. <clears throat> I'm going to have to get rid of some videos on my computer because I'm probably bogging the, the whole computer up here. So this thing should be clean by now. Right? Yeah, it looks like there's no sticking of the spring at all here. This is good. I'm going to grab the balance here and just move it around a bit. And then take it out of the lighter fluid and put it on the watch paper. And then I will blow this out with a puffer. Where is that camera pointing? Right there. They're going to blow that out with a puffer. In the meantime, I'm going to dump this somewhere where it's safe. And I'll be right back. But, before I do that, the lower jewel setting is here. And you unscrew it from the inside. Oh my god, that seems very Swiss-like. So I'm going to unscrew this from the inside, which is like crazy, I'm telling you. It's crazy. And uh, hopefully I can push the jill setting out, because it's... not sure how this would be attached. This is nuts. I don't think I've ever had to do this before on any watches I've ever worked on. This must be very Omega-like. And again, I'm doing the left and right on these jewels. So, let me get a little closer here for you. And there we go. Yeah, I have to make sure it's sort of in focus. That's why I use this high definition camera. This is not easy though. There we go. These are not screws hard. These are not, these screws are not easy to take out. And that's pretty much out. Let's see if I can grab it. There we go. Left and right. Now, I suspect this pushes out from the other side. Yeah, this is weird. What a weird configuration. Weird, weird, weird. Gotta get a different pusher here because this one is too wide. You gotta get a different pusher here. Because this one is too wide. I think maybe I've got I wish I had a convex one, because I think that might do here. This one here might do the trick. Here we go. Pop goes the weasel. It's gonna be hard to put back in. So this goes kind of crown up. Right, and then this one is like that, which is kind of weird. So that goes down. I'm gonna toss these two into the lighter fluid. Give them, drown them, baby, and then see what they look like after. I'm not sure if they, uh, if they're cracked or good or what. So there they are going for a swim. That's a weird configuration though. So. But you got to do both upper and lower jewels or you're screwed because that's where all of the, uh, the friction is, right? Those jewels are not perfect and you've got issues. So, so there you go. The problem I'll have is if there's a problem with those jewels at all, then I don't know how the heck I'll replace them. So I'm going to go in here with the, uh, with the brush and see if I can just dab them a bit with this brush. So I'm just smudging them. I'm smudging them with the brush. Smushing. Smid smudging. And this uh, just cleans off any debris they might have. And then I'll pull them out. 
that's the brush and I can just put this upside down and it'll survive in my tray I got the world's best tray I'll have to show you what I got in my tray sometime because it's pretty cool now I'm trying to grab this which is impossible there we go that's one and I'll grab the other one just move that over a bit that's two now I can get rid of this what do you think get rid of it I think I can get rid of this now yeah so just to make sure this is nice and dry I just set this down on a block like so and then I get my little puffer out which is a good one I've tried all kinds of puffers by the way and I want to puff it away from the stuff I have over here so it doesn't cause all kinds of problems so so it's not dry yet as you can see looks like there's liquid like there's fuel in there baby but this will dry it up pretty fast that's lighter fluid in there so lighter fluid evaporates super quick so it shouldn't take much to actually dry this off That beeping thing is still my alarm, so... It's pretty good there. Yeah, it's pretty dry. That's good. I close my door so the beeping doesn't scare me. So I'm going to move this out of the way and let it dry on its own. And uh, that should be fine. Um, and I'm going to address these little jobby do's and I'm going to just flip that over uh, and make sure to put the steak back. Steak! Mmm! So I just have to flip those over and make sure there's uh, no issues at all. So that goes on the inside which is crazy baby. Crazy. And see if that's clean which is should be. Yeah that's pretty darn good. No crap on that at all, folks. Let me check this one here to flip that around. So that has a rim, as you can see, and this is actually the side that the pivot would touch. So again, take my little piece of pegwood and rub that so it just rubs all the ex excess stuff off of it. like so and then I have to take the plate let's move in a little closer for this action shot here but I've got my plate here and I've got this as on the inside and there's a rim right there so so what I want to do is the one that goes in first is this one here because as you can see it has a rim so I think I need to focus too live focusing yeah so it has a little tiny rim like a ridge or whatever and so this goes in first so I put that place that in like that and it doesn't seem to have a like a nothing's been tagged with a direction so it's it should just go in like this and I can see just looking at it how clean that surface is so it just sits in there like that and I know if I use a rounded steak, if I can get that steak in there, this would be perfect because I want to make sure that that's flattened in the bottom, like so. And I can use the steak and just rotate it a bit as I go around. And then look on the other side and make sure that that is touching the edge in all areas. Yeah, so it is. It's going up. It's bottoming out, which is what I want to do. And then this is the jewel, the jewel. And again, I want to put that in, um, and there is a little tiny mark on it right there. So that's a witness mark, and I'm hoping that witness mark lines up nicely with, with this. So if I put it in like that, it should want line up perfectly with that witness mark. That's perfect right there, so I'm just going to see if I can push that down with the stake. And the answer is yes. 
Uh, it looks pretty good. It looks like where it's supposed to be. No, oh, I'm going to tap that with my hammer because I want that to be all the way down. Because if it's not all the way down, it looks almost there. It's almost there. It's not all the way down. It's going to cause uh, in shake issues. See how wide my thing is here. Just get another one that's wider. A little bit wider, maybe. Let me see if I can do that. Not sure how deep this is either. If I hammer that straight, is it going to hit the jewel? Actually, it won't hit the setting, so I don't have to worry. So I can pick a pretty wide one and then uh, hammer straight down with that. So if I pick this one here, I'm recording everything here, uh, and just put it right over the top and then just tap it. That's what I want to do. That has to be absolutely level or you're going to have end shake issues. Right? It's not going to be in far enough to, to... I think it's pretty level the way I've got it now, but I'm just going to tap it a few times. Just like that. There we go. Thing of perfection. If you look at that up close, you'll see that that is absolutely level. This could be a long video today. So if I look at that up close, you'll see there it is there. And you'll see that that's pretty level, I'd say. So, yeah, right in there. That's pretty level with the surface, which means I'm not going to have end shake issues. So there. Now, one thing I did forget was to put oil in there. Damn! I'll put oil in and then replace it and put it back. But I'm going to videotape that because you guys are going to kill me if I do. Alright, now I want to start rebuilding this movement. So I want to start actually here, on this side here, which is... There may be a lot of starting and stopping here because i got to look at my camera to see what this looked like. I think I can remember, but still... It might be tough. So if I look at my camera, and I took a bunch of videos, by the way, with the camera that I've got to combine, and you'll see them in the main video and go, how the heck did he do that? So anyway. So, this is what it looks like. I've got to re basically do that. So I put everything together. So let's see if I can do this. So it's rim problem with this is every time I do this I gotta redo it all this goes inside that so I think I'll build it and not show you the build because it's going to take too much film to do that so all right that little stick goes in first the here and it goes in like this and then this goes in next like this and then the, this goes in next, like this. This and this and this. Should I get my books out and tell you the names of these things? So it goes in like that. So there we go, that's it there. Um, and then that just sits, rides right in here, Jerry. It rides right in. So I'm going to see if I can just drop this in without any problems. Because it goes in like this. Right, but first, that stick part goes in there. Did I lose something? I think I lost something. Yeah, there was a little thing on the top here that I've lost. There it is there. Good job. Yeah, so this here was sitting on the other side, I think. All right, this is going to be fun. I'll be back. <laughs> All right, so this thing here sticks. It sticks on this, on this, on the inside. So, so if it does that, then it has to go in like this. That's why it fell out. The beeping is bugging the crap out of me. So, I may have to fix my alarm here. Um, Got like a five alarm fire happening. Let me zoom in here a little bit more. 
so you can enjoy the video. And zoom in there. So I want to make sure this is in place. So I need to get in close again. And throw that down there. And that goes like that. Like this. And then this there's a wheel, a wheel that looks a hell of a lot like this that goes on top of that. And See, there's a smooth part and a rough part, and the smooth part goes down, right? So the flat part goes up on this wheel, and that allows the wheel to just slowly move around the arbor here. So, And what I need to do is put a little bit of oil on that, because um, it's going to be... there's friction there, so just put a little bit of oil right on the, the bottom here, like that. And that'll spread around without a problem. This is going to be a long video. This might be two movies, I think. So then, so that, that's that. Now I just have to plop this on top. Like that. And then this here, plate, the plate, goes on, I believe, like this. Like that. But I can't put that plate on until I have the minute wheel on. Because if I put the plate on, I'm not going to get the middle wheel underneath it. So I'll be screwed. There we go. I'll have to put a little oil on the edge there too. So that's that. And then there's a screw that goes on that. And then that is that then in place. And then I can go attack the other side. This goes on like that, and then need another screwdriver here, and then this tightens up here, and that can be tight as heck. That's tight, but not like super over tight. And as you do this, as you reassemble the watch, that's your opportunity to, to oil it as well. So. So I just usually put a little bit of oil in the shaft here, and that'll go. That'll feed into the uh, into the movement without a problem. <clears throat> this is my golf voice, by the way. So, so there. So now, when I flip this around, I've got this thing standing at attention, which is what I wanted before. And when I grab the um, the um, what do they call it? The motion works, the stem and setting. So it all just spilled it. I just spilled the whole damn thing. So let me just unspill it here. So I got this and this and then this. I need to throw all this together again, uh, which is not easy, by the way. And I'll look at my photos just to make sure I didn't screw something up. Yeah, so I got the crown thing happening, and then I got the other thing happening. Crown thing happening, and I got this thing happening. It goes in a certain way, otherwise it won't work. Period. So there. And then what I'm going to do, I'm running this, but I'm also looking at it somewhere else, so I'm going to just put that in like this. Um, again, I'm between close and not close with these nice If I hold it from here I hold it from here, then this will be pushed in, and then I can put this down here, like that. This is tricky shit, you know? And then that'll fall in there, and you see this little post, it rides in there, which is perfect. So that, just like that, and then I need to oil. My oil, where's my oil? I need to oil this with a little thicker oil. This stuff is thicker oil. It's the yellow stuff. It's not, I think D5 maybe. But this is like gear oil. So I put a little bit of gear oil there. I put a little bit there, not too much, because if you put too much, it just dries up and gets gummy. And then you got other problems. And a little bit where the 
connection of the ratchet is here, the crown wheel here. I think it's called the crown wheel. And then a the little bit where that little post sticks through here. Just so when it spins around, it's got good action. Yeah, so it's important to oil this part up here, so it's got exceptional action. There we go, and a little bit of oil on the inside here. Now I can assemble, I can assemble, um, I can assemble, assemble, assemble. Oh ye, oh ye, what has ye got to assemble? I need to assemble this stuff here. So it looks like I better put this jobby doohickey thing in first. Right, this one here, because this would go down like that. Yeah, I think that goes down like that. Let me do a little research, so I'll come back. Yeah, that absolutely goes like that. So that goes in place here, and and this would just ride up a bit to allow me to align that like so and here's the screw now remember when I was cleaning the watch I made sure that all the screws were in place and this screw actually has a little bit of a rim to allow you to tighten the screw but at the same time it won't it won't bottom out so you've got a screw here that will hold this in place but not bottom out which is good so there we go that's going in nicely and I believe I can tighten that a bit. And this will still move. Yeah, see, look at that. Brilliant. The Swiss are brilliant. And this arm here has got the long finger pointing on the other side. So this is a long finger here. And it's pointing on the back end of this. So, so really what I want to do is I want this to be, this has got to be in the pocket over here like that. And it also has to be on the end of this. So it's got two functions. Now I think this goes down onto that, like that. Yeah, like, just like that. I'm going to put the screw in first and then I'll adjust it after. And just like the last screw, the screw is sort of threaded halfway up and then it's got a, a post which allows this stuff to move around once you've got it in place, right? So, it's always interesting taking these things apart. There's also a spring in there that I think is part of the whole thing. So this will go down. The spring has to move out of the way, right, to allow that to go down. So if I put my screwdriver in and just pull that back a bit, I'm hoping that this will accomplish what I want to accomplish. I should have done some praying while I was hoping. Hoping and praying probably work better. To push all of this and hope I don't break the spring. Oh, there we go. It's down now. Now the spring's in place, but I'm going to use another screwdriver because I basically have this thing in place now and I don't want to F it up. Bring my screwdriver back. And tighten that. Now, is this going to move? Yeah, that moves nicely. There we go. So there we go. Look at that. That's a cute little mechanism here. And that's tight, no problem. And that's tight, no problem. Now, what I want to do, too, is oil that. These two areas here. Because if I don't, there's a lot of friction there, so... I want to put a bit of the uh, thick oil on there. It's a, just a tad. There's a ton of friction right there. And on the tip of that spring, too, where that touches. So I want to go on the inside here and just put some oil right here. And that'll just transfer in. And then last but not least, 
put some oil on the tip. Yeah, I missed on the tip of this right here. Right where that goes in here. There we go. So that's good. Clean my oiler. Get everything out of the way. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, so that's all in place right now. And I push that a bit to make sure that's good. And everything is working fine, right? As they say in the business. There, now I can start building around this, I think. So I've cleaned the pallet fork up with the... Um, let me see if I can get a picture of the whole darn thing here. There we go. So there's a picture of all of the gears and stuff. So I'll have a look at that to refer to that just so it makes, makes it work a little faster. So I'm going to build all this up and then, then put the mainspring in after. So see if I can do that. So the first thing that has to go in is the pallet fork, right? And the pallet fork has the, the peg for it is down. So and it has to go between the openings here. So and I need the uh, bridge for the pallet fork. So this pallet fork goes in just like this, like that. And then there's a bridge here that goes on for the pallet fork that kind of goes like this. It's all tricky to put in place sometimes. And there's the bridge, and I got to make sure that the uh, yeah, you can't touch it or it'll just screw it up. There's the bridge. There's the pallet fork. So I'm going to um, put the screws in and use a uh, piece of pegwood to hold it down a bit as I put the screws in, because it'll ride around if I don't. Yeah, that's not good. Funny what I got watchmaker's glasses on. I should really. There we go. I should really. Uh, this is the world's biggest screwdriver. Beep. I'll check that pallet fork out in a second. So I just have to make sure that this is going in the right place here. And it just seems like it's not smooth. You do not want to strip the. Uh, I'm going to grab the other screw. Let me try this one back here. You don't want to strip anything. There we go. It's a bit better. I just retest. I'll put it in and then just do a retest to make sure it's still working. Um, and like I said, you want to look at the butt, the pivot holes to make sure that that pallet fork is going in there nicely. Just move that back and forth. That seems pretty stiff, boys. That seems pretty stiff. I'm going to look at this from the other side up close so I can turn my camera off. So it took a little work to get this bridge on and make sure I didn't crush the pivots in the pallet fork because uh, it wasn't lining up easily. So it's not an easy one to put in. So it's just a note to file, right? And it's a uh, not necessarily always going to be easy. So now I put the um, escapement in, right? And it goes gear down, so escapement's like this. Yeah, the escapement goes in like this. And it should just sit in the hole there without a problem.
Finding all these nice little pivots up is is fun. Not sure if I want to show all this on film because it's a a job and a half. I'm telling you. And I usually do this. I usually do this off film. No. Nope. Wow, these things are hard to put in. Oh, almost had it. There we go. I think the reason they're hard to put in is because they're not jewel settings. Because a jewel setting would be a little easier, I think, than this. This is nonsense, folks. Nonsense, I tell you. So, I'm going to do it anyway. This could be the world's longest video. There's the uh, there's the seconds hand going in like that, and then the intermediate wheel has to go in, which is next. Try not to touch much of this with my fingies. There's the intermediate wheel. It's going in, and then the center wheel. And I'm assuming I'll be able to get the, the bridge, the uh, the mainspring underneath all this, which uh, usually you can do. So Because sometimes they'll come in with a broken mainspring and they'll just basically replace the mainspring and then walk away. So, so that goes on like that. And then the plate for this needs to go on top, which is always interesting. And the plate for this would be this one here that's the plate here so I'm going to put that on and then see if I can line all these pivots up which is going to be some fun so, so I'll just uh, it ain't going to be the easiest job in the world I'll tell you that this is these never fall right into place they are they have personality I need to look down and see where the holes are and see if I can line it up where the holes are. Where are those holes? You see one, two, three. It's more over here, I think. There are the holes right there, maybe. And I'm going to go off film and do this because this is going to be annoying as heck to watch. Okay, there's the holes there. And this is going to be a matter of just tipping or dipping various wheels and touching and tipping them until every, all the pivots find their home. So I'll be back. All right, all I can say is, holy crap, that was not easy. So that's getting that escapement pivot hole in there was like hell. So I'm going to put this watch in the right place here. Come on, get in there. There we go. All right, I don't want to bump this because if I bump it, I'm screwed. So speaking of screwed, I got to put another screw in right here, and I got to hold this thing down just to make sure it doesn't lose its position because it was hard to put together. That was not easy, folks. It's always and I just move this around. I see yeah, it's moving. I got movement. It's, it's always difficult. Let me see if I still have movement. Just want to make sure that everything is freed up. Yeah, that's pretty good there. So there's no problem. And when I squeeze that down, I'm not going to squeeze a pivot. Tighten that up. Tighten this one up, and we are as good as gold, baby. Okay, so that's good. That is good. That's assembled. So now I just need to get that mainspring back together because that'll that'll be a big a big moment I think a big moment so let's get that mainspring in so looking at the mainspring I can see that there's um, a little bit of a ridge on the edge that I gotta figure that out so I think it's 
it catches right here, right in there. I think is where it catches. But I'm going to go go away and look at that because I think I got to put this fold part inside the mainspring and then crunch that down because there's a there's a little bit of a fold there, and then I have this part here that I believe was stuck inside of that fold. This part here was stuck in that fold, and then squeeze it down with a pair of pliers, and then and then just put the mainspring back in. So first I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the mainspring barrel, just to, just on the bottom, and that'll spread around over time. And then I want to make sure that the arbor, the center arbor, fits into this nicely, which is, um, I'm going to oil that on the inside, right there. That's where the arbor will be turning. This is one old mainspring, I'm telling you. And I just, I got some flakes in there that I want to get rid of here. Uh, leftovers, I think. So I think this has been in place for a billion years. So, so this here, as I can see it, it's kind of shiny, right? So, this shiny part was like was likely, you know, stuck inside of this part here. So like that. So I suspect it was something like this. Right? I'm not sure if it was grabbing it or whether it was just like this. Like that. So and then it caught on the inside of the barrel. And the barrel looks like it has a a tag right there. I could punch that tag out a bit just so it's uh so it's gonna grab that mainspring. So I think I succeeded. If you look really closely here, you can see the, uh, let me see if I can get my thing here, right there. So that little thing wraps around this piece of metal, but that piece of metal wraps around the edge over, right over here. So where that, where this piece is, is pounded out. So this piece right there is indented, and then there's a that piece of metal I showed you slides into that and then this little hook slides over that piece of metal. I think I've got it. So we'll know when I put it all together and and it actually works, then we're good to go. And if it doesn't work, then we're not good to go. So so there, that's a pretty easy way of telling whether you've screwed up or not, right? So just trying to fit this properly, right? And the arbor needs to go in here as well. So and it needs to go the right way. I'm gonna figure out what the right way is. So the arbor goes nubby side up. So I'll just put that in there like that for now. And I know I usually have to screw around with this to get it in properly. So, but it goes nubby side up, which is square side down. So you like my English? That's the way I describe things. And that's where the hook is. Let me look at that hook. Yeah, that's where the hook is. So the hook goes in this side here, which. Uh, I gotta play. I gotta pick this up and play with it. So I'll be back in a sec. There, it's all good. Hooks in. Everything. Everything is working now. We just there it is there with the hook in there nicely. So or the arbor in there nicely. Then I just need to put. I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of oil on the uh, top of that. So reduce to reduce all friction possible. So I'm just gonna just put a little bit right here. And that'll spread around, as they say in the business. And um, then I need to put the cap back on. And that cap should go on. It's, it's good going pretty much anywhere. But I'll just put it on right here. There we go. That cap goes on, and then I have to squeeze it with my tweezers to get that in place, right? And um, this, if you take your tweezers like that and you put it over the whole barrel like this, and then you squeeze down and pray. That's how the cap's going. On. Never easy though. Never easy. Nothing is easy in watch repair, by the way. Start where it's the smallest bit, and then you move it over. 
right. Does that fit? Yeah, that's good there. Just complete the circle. Looks like it's all in now. And you just hold it like this and then put it in your tweezers and the thick part and then make sure you've twisted it and gone around the circle like that. And that looks like it's in nicely, so I don't think there's a problem there. There it is there. So the barrel's ready to go. So if I do a quick flip here, and there's the watch and the movement. And I will take, again, a little tiny bit of oil. That little beeping is bugging the crap out of me. And I'll put that on the inside here, like so. Just like that. And that's going to help. I still, oh, I still have to oil the top and everything, so. So if I put that in like that, I should be able to slide this in right here. Without a problem. They always made these so you could, so you could remove the mainspring without any issues. There we go, mainspring is in. You can see the pellet fork moving when I do that, so it's all good news. And then uh, I need to put in the the main plate here. Now I didn't take this out, the ratchet here out, because I was very worried about um, it not losing that, right? So I was very concerned about this ratchet and screwing it in the wrong way. So I'll have another look at it here. So what I did, I tried to torque that screw it, but I can't. So I put a bunch of oil in the crack there, and you know, 90-10, and just move it around and circles violently until it's loose, and it's pretty loose now, so it's not too bad. Um, I'm also going to try to put some right on the inside there, and just move that around as well. All right, that's moving really freely now. Before it wasn't moving freely, but I tried tor torquing that screw left and right. So counterclockwise and clockwise, and it just does not want to move. So I don't want to take the head off of it and cause myself a shitty day. So I'll just do that, and then take a little bit of Rotico and clean the oil up off the top here, which is, you know, spin it around again and then clean the oil up a little more. And that should do the trick, right? So yeah, it looks pretty good there. That went through the cleaner too, so I'm not too super concerned about all this. Because it went through the cleaner without a problem. So I just need to put that back on top here. And I don't think I need to put anything else in place before I do that. So I can just throw that on top. It's funny the um, how easy it is to put this part on. No wheels involved, right? So it just plops right on without a problem like that. And just have a look at it and make sure it's going on properly. And what's going on here? Looks like it's got a bit of a problem right there. Just look at the wheel and make sure there's no issue right here. This is completely down in place. Yeah, That's good, that's good, that's good. No issues. That's popping up just a bit so just have to make sure that that stays in there when I push it down, right? Which I can do with my tweezers here. And this will go in like this, and this will go in like that. Where does that mainspring? There we go. Just like that. Good. We'll take it out and have a look at it here. I'll be back in a second. I just had to push down on it a bit here on, on this side here. That was the problem. Um, other than that, there was no issue, so now I just have to put the uh, screws back in. I'll put this one in first because it's the one that was getting, this is the one that was most agitated by everything. And just screw that in nicely. It's only uh, 
12.48 right now. It feels a lot later than that. It feels like I've been doing this forever. Forever. Uh, that screw there. And I always flatten my screws on my mat before I put the screw in. Grab the screw like this. I like grabbing it at an angle like that. That way when I turn it around, it's at the right angle to go into the hole. Right? And even if it's not, you can just nudge it right, right in like that. And then you're good. I just noticed something I forgot, which I gotta do. There's little tiny screws that I gotta go in right beside these jewels. So I forgot to put those in. So I'm gonna put those in right now, Jerry. Right now! So hopefully I'm not it's nothing is in the way so I didn't completely screw myself here that could have been ugly 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 I gotta get him close here and it's not easy these are the screws that are used to hold the this jewel in place but I'm not too concerned because that thing is in pretty good. There we go there. And then the other jewel. And remember I had a left-right situation here and I made sure that the jewel was on the correct side. Stay away from that pallet fork. I just tuck that in like that. And then I can screw these in without a problem. I can't see anything, but the camera's in the way and everything, right? So there we go. I need a screwdriver that's not so shitty. It's a yellow one. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go and take my screwdrivers and f work on the ends there and fix them up so they're nice and flat. Because you can. Uh, it's called dressing your screwdriver, so you should dress your screwdrivers every now and then, so that they're. Uh, they're nice and flat on the end and you don't have issues at all with the screwdriver. It's perfect. There we go. So that is that. And then I gotta grab this here. And this would fit on top. Let me dump the screw out here. This fits on top here and it tucks into the ratchet. So let's, let's look at where the square part is here. And then move this out of the way. So it's so it can snug in there. That fitting? Not yet. It's causing me angst. I'm just going to rotate it a bit and try this way. There we go. That fit perfectly. And then I have to put the screw on the top. Hopefully, it all doesn't fly out on me. There we go. And I think this is clockwise. Hear that every few seconds. Beep. Undo that and make it stop, Jerry. Make it stop. Perfect. Now when I wind this up, I want to see some action on the pallet fork. That is what I'm looking for. And if there's no action on the pallet fork, then I've screwed it up completely. There we go. Now let's just turn this around so for all the view and see if that pallet fork snaps back and forth. And I'll just see if I can I'll get in a little closer here and then just zoom in here for some pallet fork action. It's so exciting. So friggin' exciting. Alright, there we go. So center that and now we're gonna get some pallet fork action. Let's see if this works. All right, stand by. Oh, look at that. Snap. 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 Perfect. So that's the pallet fork action. And I actually, before I have to, before I put all this together, I got to go in here with this pallet fork and I got to put 
on the jewels a little bit of this stuff. So this Mobius 9415, which is like amazing. You just put that on the escapement or and or on the pallet fork jewels and it just works like a charm. It, it provides the right amount of lubrication for the pallet fork uh, in order to... Um, I'll see if I could film this at an angle here. This is going to be tough, really tough. I'll just leave it like that and here I'll show you what I do. I cannot, I'm going to have a hard time getting in close, so bear with me. Alright, we take a little bit of this stuff here. Not a lot. I just need to touch the... the pallet fork like that. And rotate it around and touch the other side like that so that's it that's all you need to do there's no more than that and that'll work its way around and I've had I've had watches that have average amplitude I put some of this stuff on and BAM its amplitude is amazing so I use that try to remember to use it every time so this is good news Charlie Okay, this is usually the hardest job in watchmaking is putting this balance back. So I need a very small screwdriver to turn this after I've put it in. So I got a couple of these and I think if I lay this in like this and I just have that spring in place, um, it should be able to go right in without a problem. It's tricky as heck, I'm telling you. Tricky as heck. So I'm trying to ride the spring in first and then move that move the stud over second so this is not easy boys not easy I'll give you a different view here uh, there we go that's as good as I can do it ladies and germs so I just need to have that stud down into that hole Like that and then I need to tighten that screw on the bottom I think I use my world's smallest screwdriver so I'll use a, a white it's not the smallest one but it's small enough and if I can get that screw in then it's gonna be a good day the other thing I can do is grab it with a, uh, a pin vise I might try grabbing it with a pin vise instead because it's so damn hard to, to grab it with the screwdriver. So I've got myself a pin vise here and if I can grab that screw with this pin vise and turn it then life is good. I turned it a bit. not too bad now what I'll do is the top part I gotta get this out of the way so I can see if the spring is sitting down low enough to ride this thing over I have to turn this around just gonna push that spring down just a bit and I need to move this I think that's over. Let me pick this up and have a look at it now and see if I got everything in place. Let me need my other glasses. Mm. I'm a little far over on this top one here, so I need to turn it back just a bit. Like 
that. Yeah, that's good there. And then I will take a look at this small screw here and see if it can turn any more. Um, I got the world's smallest screwdriver here. May not be able to turn anymore, but that's fine. No, that's pretty good there. Tight as heck. Let me look at everything here. The pivots are good. The jewel's good. It's been nicely washed. So, so, theoretically, I could be able to drop this in and everything's good, right? So, let me just see if the theory works. All right, so I'm going to very carefully turn that around. And I got to grab it with my tweezers. Like that. There we go. So, there it is there. Try not to drop it, and my pallet fork is on the inside. I'm going to push that so it knocks it over to the other side. There we go. And then I have to make sure my impulse jewel enters that pallet fork on the right and the correct side. So I'll do this. Put this in place. Uh, balance isn't completely in the right place, but it might fall in place if I'm lucky. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, Yeah, let me just play with this for a second. Oh, it's wanting to tick, folks. It's wanting to tick. That's always a good thing. That is a perfect good thing. So now I've got to push this down somehow without ruining anything. Just have to make sure that 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 it's in the hole because if it's not you're going to have other problems and it's not right in the hole yet so I gotta move this out again because it ain't in the hole we're looking at the balance I can see it looks like it's tipped just ever so slightly so it's not hitting the jewel so I'm gonna take this up just a bit and then I need to move this the balance needs to move over just a bit to be in the jewel, right, properly. Again, I'm not, you're never sure whether you got it right or not until you've actually done it. I'm going to have to pick it up and play with it for a second, folks. All right, I got some action there, and I basically believe that it's in the upper and lower pivot right now. And I'm just going to hold this down because um, I don't want it flying out. So, but it uh, looks like it's running, which is a really good thing. I don't know if it's running any better than it was before, but it's running. So I believe the pivots are in the holes. Yes, they are. And it seems to be running, which is great. Um, I'm going to take a little video of it and see how well it's running. Uh, it's pretty good. So. That might be it. I just have to put the rest of the watch together. Uh, so I'm not going to get it running any better than that. So let me just back this up a bit here. And I need to put this watch together. Someday I'll get a camera that zooms in automatically and really nicely. So, But one thing I want to do is make sure that this runs in all positions. And it does. So we're good. That's not completely wound up. So if I put more wind on that baby... It's going to run better and eventually that'll work itself in as well. So we'll get more of a just put more wind on it. And it's not a new mainspring, so it's all right. I'm going to take a quick video of this and just see how good it is. Good or bad. That way I can compare it to last time. And anyway, real camera work. It's like I got a cameraman just running around. So I'm going to take a video of this and see if I got myself 
gold, Jerry. Slow motion. And you can see as I do this, um, I'll just show you the phone here for a second. And there's, there's the watch. And you can just zoom in on it, right? And then hopefully I get, there we go. Uh, and just point at my phone here for a second. There, is that good? No, that's not good. That's shitty. Alright, that's good enough for now. And I will take a video of this thing. I'm to go really high on this, aren't I? I will take a video of this in slow mo. All right, so all you need is five seconds in that video. So there we go. It's actually a little bit better, but not a lot better, but a little bit better. I think it has to do with the strength of the mainspring. So I got, before it was just under 365 degrees spin, and now it's going a bit better than that, which is nice, but still not as good as I wanted it to be. So there you go there. So... Uh, and I'll check to make sure nothing's caught anywhere, right? And I haven't demagnetized it yet, which might help, so... But not too bad, um, and I haven't checked the timing on it either yet. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of magnetism on this watch, because you can just see the magnet going back and forth. It's following uh, whatever is magnetized on this watch. So I do have to demagnetize it, which might help it. I ran it through the demagnetizer and now it's perfectly demagnetized, which is great. So the amplitude is just a couple of degrees better than it was. It has been demagnetized, so it's probably about 10 degrees better than it was. So I think it has to do with the strength of the mainspring, because the mainspring is an old mainspring and probably not pushing it the way it could. But uh, in general, it's got about a 370 degree turn. A rotation on the balance which is not too bad if I look at one of the arms right so there you go all right now I gotta reassemble this fuzzy watch all right there we go not so fuzzy anymore so there we go now I gotta reassemble this watch so I've got to flip this thing around and make sure I stay away from the main part of it so yeah I'll just lay this thing down here like this. Just like this should be fine, right? Uh, now I got to put the cannon pinion back in. I'll just get a better angle at this for you guys. Since this is a complete, complete watch job here. There, let's try to get the best focus possible. Uh, it's not too bad right there, is it? All right, so there's the cannon pinion. Throw that down. Now, usually I just I put that in, and then I can either push it down into place, or I get a stake sometimes and use a stake to push it down. Because stake is actually a little safer than than just pushing it down. Because I can put, I get all the leaves of the cannon pinion are protected when I have the stake in there. So there we go. So that's down in there now. And it's all the way in. Yeah. So I use a stake that's got a rounded end on it and I push that straight down, which is probably the best way to do it. And this is in there nicely, no problem. And then I need to put this here. Um, now it didn't have a, uh, a leaf in there, so I'm not sure whether I need one or not, but I should go find one and come back. There's my collection of dial washers. I can't remember which ones were the big ones, but probably down the end here, maybe. So, some boxes of dial washers. Let's see if these are the big ones or not. Nope, those are the teeny ones. So the big ones would be down this end here. And I just want one big enough to fit on the end of this thing here, so. Yeah, these are the big ones. So, just take a dial washer here. Uh, get a better one than that. I just threw it into the container. Nice job, buddy. So that's a good one there. And that will just sit on top. 
like that. So that will help push the uh, gear down if it's, you know, if it's, it wants to ride up to the face, it'll push the gear down. So you got to put a dial washer in there, folks. Now I might be able to find one that's a little bit more narrow than that one, because that one's a pretty, pretty thick one. So I've got a bunch of dial washers here, so I'm not sure where I picked them all up. The beeping is still happening. Maybe I'll use this one here. That's a pretty broad dial washer there. I'll use that one maybe. You know what? That's too small. I'm going to use the big one again. Yeah, I'm going to use the big one. The boat is out. Where's my beep? Come on, beep. Beep, I tell you. There you go. Alright, dial washer is in. I just have to put the dial back on a bit. You're the man of the chorus. We hope you like our show. We hope you're rooting for us. So just look for the seconds hand, which is way over here. So it's all kind of lined up there, right? So I have all that's oiled now. So oh, one thing I didn't do was oil the pivots on this side, which is a faux pas. This is what I used to tighten that uh, screw when I couldn't grab it properly. So I'm going to use, going to oil the pivots and on this side here because they need to be oiled. That's probably why the uh, watch wasn't working as good as it could work. Pivots weren't even oiled. That might improve the amplitude significantly. Yep. I'll bet you any money my amplitude is going to go way up from all this nice oil on here. And they oil the other side as well. I'll just sit this thing down for a sec here. Looks like it's slowing down and stopping. The heck is this all about? Oh. I think I'm putting something on something here. Oh, I know what it is. My wheel fell off and it got caught up. Which stopped it. Yeah, or something like that. I'm going to check this out really quickly here. This can't be something bad. No, I don't know what that was. Anyway, I'm back in business. I think I touched something. Which is very possible. I'm using light oil on all of this right now. <coughs> and my thing is still beeping away. There we go. Oiled. I forgot all about the oiling, folks. I forgot all about the oiling. <coughs> <coughs> No, actually, bad cough. <coughs> I don't know if that made any difference in the amplitude. Let me check. So now we've got to loosen the screws that were there for the uh, face so I can put the uh, face back on. Loosen those screws. I think there was three of them. I think the one was missing, though. You can't remember. Yeah, there was one missing. That's all. So that's the screws are now loose. So I should be able to just plunk the face back on. Keep my fingers away from the balance. This is a tricky part here. Where is it? There it is there. Alright, so where's that balance? Alright, you can put that back in. Like 
that and then put the dial washer back in. It's one humdicker of a dial washer. Humdicker. Humdick and dial washer. Now, what do we got here? Let's try to line it up here. Hey man, that just fell right in, baby. Now, find the screws. There's one right there, right here. And you don't, when you tighten these, don't over tighten them because I've seen the uh, the legs on the uh, dial come off. The feet, dial feet. I call them legs, but they're actually dial feet. I've seen those come off because some head of dough is tightening them way too much. So it just needs to be tightened a bit. And that's it and again watch where your fingers are when you're when you're rotating the, the pocket watch if this was somebody else's pocket watch I'd be likely put gloves on or something to be a good boy but it ain't it's mine I don't plan on selling it although you know the old days I watched videos of the old guys doing repair on pocket watches and none of them had gloves on everybody was just gloveless and this was in a factory I think it was in an Elgin factory or something and nobody was wearing gloves it was BS going on here with this glove thing so I think I just hit the dial with the edge of this thing here the <laughs> great good move I can just rest this down like this shouldn't be a problem because I've got to put the hands on now which is the tricky part I like to put the uh, second hand on first just to get it out of the way and the way I do that is I just edge it over like that looks like that second hand is so close to the dial and I just do that and then push it in and then the hour hand I do like to have it facing up when I do this I don't know why but I do so the hour hand goes in like this and I will leave a little real estate here on the side because I typically I will put the hour hand in and if it's a little bit to the left or right of the 12 o'clock position then I will just adjust the minute hand accordingly so we can go straight down on this I'm trying to get it down far enough there we go and it's got to ride just a bit higher than the uh, seconds hand which hopefully it will and then this the minute hand goes right on top and in this case here it's just slightly off from the 12 o'clock so I'll make this slightly off from the 12 o'clock pick the right pusher here and then I'll push this down like so and then I gotta look at it sideways to make sure there's clearance because you need clearance so I'm gonna pick it up here and look at it sideways go so there it is I put it over a bit and I'm not sure if I put it over a bit too far because uh, I wanted the clearance right so where is that friggin Looking for that all right now if I just turn this no that's okay it's 12 o'clock high baby so it worked well no problem at all now I gotta wind this around until it hits the other side to see if I if my hands will this will clear the second hand and it should without a problem yeah, and the minute hand is clearing nicely so if you look at the distance between the minute hand and the hour hand this is what I got look how tight that is but that's good 
no problem at all it clears it every time and the hour hand is up a bit but it also looks like it had been bent in the past 100 years ago so, so I'm going to bring that around it's up a bit but I don't mind that because it's going to easily clear the second hand right and look down here and that's definitely a clearance now the question is can I nudge it down a bit just a bit yeah that's good there that is good there my friends let me look at that clearance again yeah we're good so that's cleared it up nicely now I will move it to the 12 o'clock position and what's going on here oh yeah I'm pushing down it shouldn't that winds it <laughs> so it doesn't work there's the 12 o'clock position and it looks like everything is nicely lined up for 12 and I gotta get the case out here and it needs to be cased so I already pulled this out on the case this case um, I'm sure I don't I don't think I need to put any lube in there or anything just leave it the way it is I need to lube it later I can lube it later but I just have to push this in on the case here like this so here's the case and I just get my hands out of the way and it's got to go this way I think beep stop friggin beeping There we go. You can tell when it catches. And then when you do that, just flip it around the other way. Like that. And I'll re I will remove the fingerprints, ladies and gentlemen. I will remove the fingerprints. There we go. So now I want to put the case screw in. And I've only got one in this watch. So i got to have to find another one. Because it should have more than one case screw. And there we go. And that goes in now like this. Come on, fine, fine home, baby, fine home. Nice. So that's in there, good. I'll find another case screw later, but for now, I'll just use this. This one here will hold it in place. I think I squished something just now because it looks like it's not ticking anymore. So I'm not sure what the hell I did. Oh, maybe I touched the second hand. I've done that before. Yeah, I did. It's funny, you touch the second hand and the whole damn watch stops. And you're like, okay, what did I exactly do? That was weird. I'll have to check this out. Maybe there's a piece of dirt in here or something. Because that's just screwing it in. And... Somehow it's squishing something. Check the edges here. I think it's over this way too much. So I think I'll just loosen this up a bit. Casing is fun, ladies and gentlemen. Casing can be a challenge. It wants to run right now. And I think it needs to go up a bit. Like that. Yeah, I'm not sure what I did there. But anyway, this is a uh, interesting. Oh, okay, now it's fine. So something's getting squished. <laughs> I'll have to check that out after. It's something is getting squished. I'm not sure what it is. So just grab the center wheel here and then jog it back and forth to make sure there isn't anything unusual going on here. Because the wheel is nice and loose, so. Beep. Anyway, I will take this off camera and fix it and come right back. So what's happening is that the uh, hour wheel is just going down. And it's getting caught up in the minute wheel on the top, right? 
when I turn it like this and I tap it, it's falling into place and the watch is running again. So it's just a matter of adjusting that hour wheel somehow. Because it's as I looked at it on the inside, it looks loose or something. Now maybe when I put the screws in for this, it wasn't uh, properly... Uh, the screws weren't in place properly, right? Because it's working now if I push that in nicely, right? So, but if it's, if it's out, let me just pull this, see if I can pull this out here. Like that. And then it's working nicely now, so I'm sure whether I should fix it or not. It's this, this here I think is just a bit too loose. There, see? The wheel just moves. If you tap it like this, I've moved the wheel out of place. And then this stops the watch. So a little bit of diagnosis for you. So I need to take this apart and fix it again. Alrighty then, I got it running again without a problem. And I think what it was is just that dial washer or something uh, was causing that to slow down. So it's running well now, no problems. So I will put this the back back on it and set the time and that'll be it. I, I need to regulate this but I'm not going to do that right now so it's way too long a video. Just put that back in like that. Got the last wind on it and there she is. Running well! So that was a dial washer and I don't think it was strong enough but it was allowing that to push up so I still need to put a case screw on the or a dial screw on the side here to make that uh, to finalize that but there it is disassembly wash wash reassembly it didn't get a lot stronger uh, because it was uh, it it's the mainspring I would have to replace that mainspring with a much stronger mainspring and then we'd be good to go so that's it so let me just get a nice little close-up of this watch uh, clean the face on it later uh, but that's it there it's a beautiful old watch so the cleaning machine worked well. I'm going to publish this video, but you've already seen it if you're looking at this right now. So thanks a lot. And there you go. Eh? All right, it's all over, man. So this is JD. So thanks for watching my channel. So I stripped this baby down, cleaned her up, put it back together. Had a little bit of an issue, I think, with that dial washer on the top. Because um, if that uh, hour wheel just slips up and the gears don't mesh perfectly, it's going to stop the watch. Um, I still have to clean the um, clean the fingerprints off the dial. I can do that with Rodico. So again, thanks for watching my channel. If you need to get a hold of me, jdwatchservice at gmail.com. Got to do it that way, I guess. And uh, have a good day.